A huge move to the herd, and welcome to episode 9 of our Omni Factory playthrough. So, between episodes, I have done a lot of work in preparation for getting our electric blast furnace set up. So, I made um, a stack of primitive circuits, so obviously, I've used quite a few. It wasn't too difficult, um, especially with the um, crafting calculator and I made a stack of LV machine holes because I knew we'd need them. I didn't realize how much effort that would be though because to make a stack of LV machine holes that's 704 iron ingots and 64 tin ingots and it takes a lot of time especially when you feed them through a basic compressor so that's something I probably won't repeat in a hurry um, at this tier and it's even more uh, incentive to move on to MV tier and higher just to try and speed up some of these processes. I appreciate that down the line, everything will slow down again. But uh, yeah, one thing I, I, I did a bit more mining between episodes um, just to try and top up all the stuff we had. Um, it's in my chest. So, but even then, managed to burn through a lot of iron. But one thing I did find was pyrite ore, or a stack of that will actually convert nicely into six stacks of iron with very little effort. So all you need to do is um, macerate it, macerate it again to get impure, and then put it through a centrifuge to get pyrite dust and you get tiny piles of iron dust, which is a bonus. And the pyrite dust, you can electrolyze three of them for one iron and two sulfur, or you can just heat it for one iron. So, yeah, perfect. So I've been uh, macerating some pyrite to try and replenish my um, iron supplies. Uh, the other thing I made was an upgrade to my hook, and it's this one, which is the red hook, I think it's called. Yes, the red hook. The great thing about this is, as it says on the description, creative flight within the volume defined by the hooks. So I've got a hook there, a hook there, a hook there, and can I do a fourth one there? So I can move up, I can move down, I can move along. So it gives me a lot more versatility when moving around. And just double jump to, um, Get off the hooks and the final thing I did was I applied hardened upgrades to all of our dynamos um, this is more a future episode requirement but these upgrades will have increased our maximum power output to 240 RF per tick so with the four of them I'm now generating 960 RF per tick which is going to be good for our MV tier etc Obviously, the, the bottleneck is the conductive iron energy conduits because they can only take 512. So, um, yeah, there's, there's potentially wasted energy at the moment, but it's good to plan ahead for the future. So, to today's episode, we're going to do two major quests uh, today. We're going to create the electric blast furnace. Um, so the electric blast furnace is a major, major milestone in your Greg Tech career. It has the power to smelt more advanced materials, the first of which, aluminium, is going to be imported in the immediate future. There is a diagram of how to build the EBF in JAI. The second and third levels must be a 3x3 square shape of coil blocks. Cuprum nickel is the only type of coil block you have access to for now with an empty centre. However, the bottom top layers are very flexible. The EBF controller must be on the bottom layer of the structure and on the middle of an outer edge. Otherwise, you can put the hatches and buses wherever you want, filling all the gaps in each layer with heatproof machine casings. It's worth noting that you must use at least 10 heatproof machine cases in your layout or the structure will not form. This quest calls for two energy hatches, a fluid input and output, and an item input and output, which are total six positions. The specific order and placement don't matter as long as you can access them. The seventh position is your EBF controller, leaving 11 gaps to be filled with heatproof machine casings. If you did everything right, the structure will form, the colours on its hatches and casings will unify, and the controller will say idling. 
you'll most likely want to locate your power quite near to the EBF. It's very power hungry and if it cannot get enough energy, progress on the current item smelting will start to regress. Be careful to ensure the EBF has enough power and keep a soft hammer nearby to pause it by tapping the controller if you run out of power. And you can see all the components we need. We need the electric blast furnace controller, 16 cooper nickel coil blocks, two energy input hatches, input bus, output bus, fluid input hatch, fluid output hatch, and at least 11 heat proof machine casings. The other one we're gonna make in is the pyrolyze oven. Uh, the main function of this oven is to increase the fuel values of your woods and coal while also recovering some of the various potentially useful waste products. Turning coal into coal coke will not ma only make it more useful as fuel, but will also produce phenol, which you, or phenol, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one, which you'll need for circuits. The pyrolyzed oven is also the source of several other fluids that can be distilled for useful ingredients. And again, we need cooper nickel blocks, we need input output buses, fluid input and output hatches, energy input hatch, some ULV machine cases, and the pyrolyzed oven itself. So I made all of those. And to make the cooper nickel blocks requires, on the top of my head, something like 100 and, well actually, rather than do it off the top of my head, I'll ask my calculator. Where's my cooper nickel blocks? Should be here. So to make the 32 required, 128 copper ingots and 128 nickel ingots, which you then turn into 256 cooper nickel, which becomes 512 wires, which is then 256 2x wires. So again, lots of resources. So let's grab all of our components. Let's just tidy up my tools. Next, we're going to take some conductive iron energy conduit, some fluid conduits. Uh, we don't need the item conduits at the moment, the heat proof machine case in the 16x cable as well. So, go down into the uh, what will become the furnace floor. The one thing I have done is I've run my energy conduits and also fluid conduits and some item conduits for later down the back here and they pop out just under here. Now one of the things for the pyrolyzed oven, if I go into this, is we're going to need, if I go into making fennel, call it fennel for now, steam. So uh, if we put coal in there with steam, we'll get coal coke and fennel, or phenol. Really should find out how that's pronounced. Now, that means we're gonna to need to produce a source of steam. So one of the things I've made is a basic fluid heater. And we provide that with water, and then that will output uh, steam into our um, pyrolyzed oven, which means that when we add the coal in, we'll get um, not only coal coke, but also the necessary um, fennel, which we need for our um, MV stuff. So, if we... start out by if I clear this one out and this as well I'm going to drop our conductive iron I think that should be enough that's our energy conduits I've made a CEF 16x CEF um, so that we have a dedicated power supply. So just pop that in. And now I'm going to run, hopefully I've calculated this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
we'll run our 16x cable along. Is that getting power? It is. And we'll drop our basic fluid heater here. Now we just need to provide it with some water. Tidy all this up in a sec. Pressurized fluid conduits. Uh, and we'll just make sure that it's connected around the back. I guess there's a link missing somewhere. Just there. So grab my yet wrench and see if I can just about see it. Actually, let's switch this to uh, that fluid. No, that's item. That's fluid. Pop that back. So we've now got water going into our heater. There's plenty of water in, so we'll just patch up the floor. Make it look a little bit nicer. Now we can start doing this. Now the plan is to have the paralyzed oven here and the EBF here. First things first, we're going to want to put down our fluid input hatch here, and we'll probably need to rotate this, or will that just output? I will need to wrench this, I think, and then auto output, and that should produce steam into there once I've put the necessary chips in, which I forgot to get. Let's just go grab those quickly. I need at least two of these. We'll just turn those into integrated circuits. And what does it say I need for steam? That's circuit one. So just quick right click. And that should start filling up with steam, and it is perfect. So, fluid impact hatch is done. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I want my energy input hatch. Just here to give me a bit of power, and then it's just the machine casings. I think so. I don't think we need anything else here. Benefit this hook, All right? And then we come out too because that's where my coils will be, and so if that's that. I want to put my fluid output hatch here. I want my input bus probably here. I'll put the output bus here as well. Our controller just here, and the rest will be machine casings. And the last bit is just fill in this gap with cupronical blocks.
and we have a completed machine that's now sitting at idling. We'll just check our input hatch. We've got steam sitting there nicely. So let's go grab a stack of coal. chip goes on the input bus. Should check that. Uh, yes, on the input bus. And it's just circuit zero, is it, for coal? No, it's configuration one, which I've already configured. So that goes in there, that goes in there. And we're now making, hopefully, two things. Check in a sec. It's not exactly speedy, but this is what we've got at the moment, so this will do us. So we now have coke and phenol or phenol. Brilliant. So that's one thing ticked off the list, and we can now claim our Omni Quarter. So the big one next, the EBF. If I look at the, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Look at the multi-block pattern. So we need to put the controller in the middle and everything else is flexible. So because the EBF requires effectively MV, we're gonna put two LVNEG hatches on um, to provide sufficient power um, to use it whilst we're still at the LV tier. So I'm gonna pop one energy hatch there, one energy hatch there. Um, we'll pop our controller here. Have I got this right? Yeah, I think I have. Um, I want to put my, let's do fluid input hatch at the bottom, fluid output hatch there and input bus at the bottom and output bus there. Take our heat proof machine casings. And no, this is wrong, isn't it? Yes, I'm pretty sure. If I look at the diagram, yes, we've got to have the Cooper nickel blocks. Yeah. Makes much more sense now. Right, so what have we got here? We've got input hatch, input bus, and what we'll do is we'll pop one, two, three. Just fire a line down there so I can move up and down. One, two, three. bus can go at the bottom here and the output fluid output hatch can go there nope did it again fluid output hatch can go here not that one and then we'll take out heat proof casing pop that there and there Cooper and nickel blocks, which should go and then the 
last thing should be, if I've done this right. Oops. See what I'm doing? Now. Perfect, it's now idling. And I think the test now is to go up and grab all that lovely aluminium dust that I've been producing with our line. So we'll just grab, let's grab four stacks because our input bus can take four. Just stick it all in there, and that's running. And once that's done, oop, output's here. We have an aluminium ingot. There should be another quest done. Claim our Omni Dollar, very generous, and that's our aluminium ingot. Wow, so we are really making great progress towards the MV tier. So let's go pop those away. I'll just let the aluminium run because there's a couple of things I want to get done before the end of this episode. And they center around getting energetic alloy. And the reason I want energetic alloy is so I can start working on deep mob learning. Um, so I could do the simulation chambers and all the uh, stuff without energetic alloy. But the loop fabricator, which is where you get all of the good stuff from, requires energetic alloy. Now, to get energetic alloy, we need to unlock, unlock the basic mixer. So let's quickly add the mixer into my calculator and see what I need. Right, so I'm going to need some glass. I already have. We've got our LV machine holes. I hope I never have to make one of those again. Uh, what else do we need? We need some primitive circuits. We've got two of those. So the rest is all make it and stuff because we need motors, etc. So we need six tin. Two iron, two rubber, one copper. Two iron. Wait, copper. No, there it is. And that should be me. Right, so let's see if we can quickly make this. Four rods, two copper wire, two plates. Press on. You notice I've put uh, chests and on the top and backs with conveyors. The amount of material I was processing, standing there loading them in the stacks of um, 64 just did not make sense. So I quickly did that. Two tin wire, and two tin rods. And magnetic iron rod. Is it just the one or is it two? No, it's just the one. stuff. Uh, we should have our plates done now. What else do we need? Tin rods should be done in a second. So we need our saw. I haven't used that for a while. Just convert those tin rods into bolts. And I've just realized I've got tin screws already. I don't need to do anything with those. I'll put the tin rods away. 
Actually, no, I need one tin rod. Right, so tin plates, four of those. a tin ring with the hammer. Plates being done, we need two tin cable. Copper wire, should, fine copper wire should be done. So we'll make out, is it two motors we need? Just the one. Done. A tin rotor. They're always fun to make. So what I'm missing for my tin plates. Yes, I think probably in our next episode we need to make some assemblers up because we're still having to rely on using hand tools even though we've eliminated them for a lot of the stuff they're still there taunting us one basic mixer so yeah we need to start getting more automation done I think right mixer done Clayman Omnicle. Now the next thing it says energetic alloy. An Ender IO alloy made from energetic blend and a gold ingot in your new electric blast furnace. Throw both ingredients into the input bus and in 20 seconds your energetic alloy ingot will be in the output bus. So energetic alloy is as you said a blast furnace of gold and energetic blend. Now energetic blend is redstone dust and goldstone dust, uh, glowstone dust even. This is cool. Don't have an abundant supply of glowstone, so how do we make glowstone? We mix phosphor and gold. Okay. So let's see how much gold we've got. Uh, I do have some glowstone from, if you ride the mine tracks, there's a subway system throughout the Lost Cities. And there's some stations and you can smash up some um, glowstone cubes uh, and get it from there. So we could use that, but we can also mix it up using, so we say five. Is it because there's 10? Do I still have my mortar with me? I do. Because my macerator is currently making the pyrite just use it manually because one thing I managed to do is I purchased some phosphor and I've been processing that to get more so we've got phosphor and gold dust we mix these together and we get glowstone dust We'll let that do, and meanwhile, I'll get some redstone. Ten should be enough. And we'll then take glowstone, redstone, and mix that into energetic blend. Does that give us two? Yep. So it should give us 20 energetic blend, which means I need 20 gold. Add this to the queue of our blast furnace. So we're still processing the aluminium, but I'm going to just add that and that in there. The minute that's finished, So we've got 
26 aluminium ingots already, which is lovely. So 20 seconds later, and it says. And we have our energetic alloy ingots. Perfect. <coughs> so we've made the huge strides in clearing off a lot more quests in the beginning tab. Um, we are, we have our electric blast furnace, we have our pyrolyzed oven, which unlocks quite a few things in this area. Uh, I think next time we'll start looking at, I don't know whether to go with AE or perhaps play with logistics pipes for a bit, because the logistics pipes will give me early um, automation options, but you are going to tear it down eventually and replace it with AE2. And we've got uh, deep mob learning, which we can start playing around with now. And considering the amount of uh, resource processing I've had to do, deep mob learning might be a good option as well. So I hope you like this episode. If you do, feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more episodes, then please feel free to subscribe. And till the next episode, I wish you a very pleasant day. Goodbye.